I'd like for you to do is in the chat, say what um, trig function, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, or tangent opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. So, ka toa. Say what trig function you used, okay? That's what I want you to do. Five minutes of chatting. Which sine fun which function, sine, cosine, or tangent did you use? Logan, you, George, and Jada can chat if you want. Just kind of turn around and chat with each other. What trig function did you use? Okay. <laughs> So, Dan, Luca, Thomas, Miriam, Taylor, Selena, Elijah, Kaylee, and Sean, what trig function did you use for number one? Or did you use a trig function? How did you find X? If you have two sides and you're looking for a third side, what do you use? Or do you use Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared? That is correct. So for the first one, you want to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I didn't look well enough. That's my problem, right? These are our four choices. So what'd you use for the next one? What's the 24, the O, the A, or the H? I think sign is the perfect answer. What do you guys think? Gianluca, Thomas, Kaylee, Elijah, Selena. Uh -huh. It has, there's an E at the end that's invisible. So Gianluca, we're on Friday's homework. So I need you to open the trig homework from Friday the 23rd. Okay. What about number three? What do we think about number three? What do we use there? I see the O. Oh, I labeled it the high, the O, oh, but it is not. It's the H. You're right. So that is 100% cosine. Absolutely. What about number four? Tangent. Mm -hmm. Number five. If you have two sides and you're looking for another side, there's no angle here, so you want to use Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. All right. Let's review it all together. So that was your five-minute discussion, ladies and gentlemen. If you would come back to your attention on the board... <clears throat> Wrap up the final conversation that you're having. Question number one, if you're given two sides and no angles, do you use trig or do you use Pythagorean theorem? Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What am I looking for here? An A, a B, or a C? C, okay, so we're gonna do 10 squared, plus seven squared equals C squared, right? And then we just solve that. What about number two? Do I use so, ka, or toa? If I'm looking at the 46, what's the 24? The O, the A, or the H? That is the O. And what's the X? 
the H, absolutely. So if I have O and H, I can't use cosine, I can't use tangent. So I'm going to do sine. What goes next to the sine? 46, sine of the angle. That angle always goes right here. And then O goes in the numerator and H goes in the denominator. So 24 over X. This is the tricky one. When X is in the denominator, if you make your proportion and you cross multiply, you run into a roadblock. You can't do that multiplication easily, right? Commutative property multiplication says that you can switch those two things. 46 times X and X times 46 is exactly the same thing. So if you start your cross multiplication here and you run into this roadblock, you can't put sine 46 times X in the calculator, just switch those and rewrite the whole equation. So I put an X here equals 24 over sine 46. Once you rewrite it, now you can just put this in the calculator. Okay, I can. So step number one is figure out what trig function you wanna use. We wanna use sine. Step number two is write the equation, right? As a proportion, so this is over one. I've got two fractions equal to each other. Then you can cross multiply. When you cross multiply, if you run into a roadblock, you can't put that in the calculator use commutative property multiplication. You can just switch those two things. Once you switch those two things, you rewrite the equation, that's step three. And then you can just put this in the calculator. Make sure that the angle is always in parentheses. Okay. So let's look at number three. We're gonna use the exact same process. We've got sine, cosine, and tangent. Which one do I need to use? So Katoa, which one do I use? Same one or different one? Different one. Thomas is telling me I need to use cosine. So I have the H, that's the hypotenuse, and I have the adjacent, that's the X. So I'm going to use Ha. So cosine of my angle, that was 25, equals the A goes in the numerator, the H goes in the denominator. So A over H, X over 21. Make it into a proportion and then cross multiply. Can I put those two numbers in the calculator? Yeah. So all I'm going to do is put in cosine 25. Again, put your angle in parentheses times 21. We're gonna to round to the nearest tenth, so make sure you're rounding correctly. Do we need to practice putting these in the calculator or do we okay with that? Okay. Are we? I don't know. You tell me. If we need to put them in the calculator, make sure we know how, let's do it. Um, from the 27, what's the 13, the O, the A, or the H? From the 27, what's the 13? The O, and what's the X? Is that H or A? A. So again, if I do so ka toa. And I have O and A, I can't use sine, I can't use cosine. All I have is the O and the A. So we're gonna just use this to write our equation, tangent 27 equals O over A, so 13 over X. That's step one, write the equation, right? Step two is try to do the cross multiplication. Can I do this in the calculator or do I run into a roadblock? I do run into a roadblock. So I pull out my commutative property of multiplication and switch those two things in my proportion. X equals, my X is coming to the numerator, my tan 27 goes to the denominator. Does that make mathematical sense to everybody? Why I can do that? Exactly. So now we just put this in the calculator. Exactly. This just skips a step. If you recognize that this is commutative property multiplication and you can just switch places, then that kind of avoids the having a divide in your equation in order to get this end step. It skips the middle step. Okay, what about question five, which, 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Thank you. What do I do here? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Or do I have to use Pythagorean theorem? So, so how do I know the difference between using Pythagorean theorem and using trig? What's the difference between those two problems? What is it? So here I have all three sides, absolutely. If you've got three sides, you want to use Pythagorean theorem. If you have an angle, you want to use trig. You can only use trig with an angle, ladies and gentlemen, okay? With an angle, or today we're going to learn if you're looking for an angle. So you can use two sides to find an angle with trig, or you can use the angle to find one of the sides. But for trig, to use Sokotoa, you have to have an angle or want an angle. If all you have is sides, you want to use Pythagorean theorem, okay? A lot of people get confused about that. So I just want to make sure we understand. So this would be x squared plus 16 squared equals 27 squared. Wow, that jumped around a lot. Okay. How do I figure out whether these form a triangle? Small plus medium has to be bigger than large. So 8 plus 12 is bigger than 14. 8 plus 12 is bigger than 14. Is that true? Yeah, so that forms a triangle. How do I decide whether they form a right triangle? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Does this form a right triangle? So 8 squared plus 12 squared equals 14 squared. It does not. So the side lengths form a triangle, but not a right triangle. Okay. What about question number seven? If I'm trying to get A and B parallel, right? So unlike the warm up, all I care about is A and B. Does A prove A and B parallel? Why not? The diagonal. There's no. There's nothing that connects those two immediately, right? Does this prove A and B are parallel? Yeah, I think so too. They're same side. They're both on the north side of this transversal and they add up to 180. So that one works. How about this one? Does it prove A and B parallel? They're diagonal again. Can't do that. What about this one, A and B parallel? Do I have any information on B? So that one doesn't work. C is the only one that works. Okay. Um, I think we've got two more. Do we need to talk about these? These are very similar to what was in the warm up today. So what is the slope of this line? One, two, three. So that's down three. And then over five, one, two, three, four, five, five, negative three over five. So what's a parallel slope going to be? Exactly the same. And what's a perpendicular slope? Five over three. Point symmetry means it can rotate 180 degrees. So point symmetry, two rotations to get back to the original. Line symmetry, I can slice in half somehow, and then no symmetry. Which one has line symmetry? Mm -hmm. And which one has no symmetry? R, which means Z has point symmetry. I can take this point of Z and rotate it 180 degrees, and it'll be right here. And then I can rotate it 180 degrees more, and it's right here. Point symmetry rotates 180 degrees. Okay. Last one. This is the easy one if you see it, and it's a really hard one if you don't. What do you do here? How do I decide these triangles are similar? <clears throat> I'm given one, two, three, four sides, and I'm given one, two, three, four angles. So what combinations of angles and sides do I have here? 
A A Y. It's one hundred percent right. They do look congruent, but how do you know it's A A? You do. So you add the angles and you find out this one is 34. Always start with the angles. They're the easiest ones to start with. So R goes with N. And then you add these two angles and figure out this one is 79. So L goes with C and then G goes with P. As long as all the angles match, it's angle, angle. Okay. If you try to put these in a proportion, 30 goes with 45. That works. 30 and 45 can go together. But then 18, I have no idea what 18 goes with. 18 and X. So I can't prove anything. And then over here, I've got the 48. That's fantastic. But I don't have anything that it goes with. So I only have one pair of sides that match up. I can't make a proportion to test if they're similar. Okay. How are we feeling about the trig and the Pythagorean theorem, the right triangle stuff? That's what I was most worried about remembering from Friday. It's been almost a week. Are we okay with sine, cosine, and tangent? Okay. What I would like to do... Chloe, are you talking about the 423 or the 426 from yesterday? The message you sent me? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Were you talking about the 420? Okay. Gotcha. Do you want to do the second attempt? What? Um, should be. Gotcha. So Miriam, that's why the cut score is 50% because I wanted you to see what was coming in the units nine and 10, but I really did not expect anybody to get a single circle question correct. We're gonna spend almost two weeks on circles and after we learn it, then you'll know it, but it'll take that long to figure out. Uh-huh. So we're going to do quads and polygons next, and then we'll do circles. And then we'll do surface area. Yeah, Lily. Say it again. Number two. So those intervals. Which of the following intervals does not have a vertical line of symmetry? So what I want you to look at here is between negative 6 and 2. So between negative 6 and 2. Can you cut that in half and have it be exactly the same? I could cut this part in half between negative six and negative two, but if I cut this in half, halfway between negative six and positive two is negative two. So if I slice this right here, is this side and this side the same? It is not. So then if you take the next interval, two to seven, 
between two and seven, halfway through that, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, halfway through that is right here. Can I slice that in half and have this side be the same as this side? That's my line of symmetry, right? And it says, oh, which one does not have a vertical line of symmetry? So then I could come down here and I could look at the next one, negative two to positive two, negative two to positive two. I can slice that in half and this side is the same as this side. So this one works between four and five. Between four and five is this little piece. We've sliced that in half. And then negative six to negative two, we get another color. Negative six to negative two, I can slice that part in half too. So it has symmetry on this side and this side. So because it says which one does not have vertical line of symmetry, that's gonna be that first one. Hmm. What do you mean my first one? Oh, my first one is this one? Oh, gotcha. Negative six and negative two or negative six and positive two? So negative six to negative two works, that's this piece. 